This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantire.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Magna, forward for all. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me somewhere in between Munich and Berlin, just south of Leipzig, at what could be the best off-way charging hub, off-way, off-highway charging hub that I've ever been to. You and I have been all around the world looking at charging stations together, and well, this might be the best design for an off-highway charging hub I've ever been to. We've certainly been to cooler charging stations with like Zeus Marshausen with the cables coming down from the roof at 500 kilowatts and crazy ones, but this seems like a perfectly reasonable installation that provides nice amenities in an area that's off the highway, and I wanna walk you through the location selection. There's no amenities around here, so they're actually building them here on site. I love that idea. Cheap land, bring power out here, but big charging chargers in. I'm going to go on a full tour of this charging location here. I actually don't even know the name of the town. I was just driving through on my trip and I was like 40 stall supercharger. I got to stop there and check that out. So <laughs> let's go on a full tour of this charging hub. This is why I spend time in Europe so we can learn about these charging stations and hopefully US charge point operators can look at these videos and say, you know what? We should do the same thing. I hope that's what happens. <laughs> You join me in Schleis, I think that's how you say it, Schleis, Schleis, Germany, and we are right off the highway. I don't know if just over here you're able to see the trucks going by, but it's right off the highway in the middle of honestly nowhere. This is a very rural part of Germany, and you can see we're in an area with no real amenities. But what NBV, this German charging network here, as well as Tesla have done is they've built an entire charging lounge. Now, I'm on a road trip all around Europe this week in a BMW iX that I've rented from Sixt. And uh, of course, as an American, it's sometimes difficult to activate charging networks over here. So I've pretty much been using Tesla superchargers with my BMW. And I actually can't even activate the NBV chargers, the ENBW, with my... Uh, yeah, with my uh, American stuff. So anyway, that's kind of a bummer, but we're ripping here at just about 200 kilowatts into the IX. But look at this charging hub. This is unbelievable. I genuinely am looking at it for the first time with you guys. It's a brand new site. You can see it's just under construction. Actually, I'm not sure if this is even listed inside the Tesla car navigation yet, because in the Tesla app, it shows that some stalls may be out of service, although it shows all 40 Tesla superchargers are available. On top of the 40 Tesla superchargers that you have here, we also have, I don't know, two, four, six, eight. So I guess 16 other 300 kilowatt chargers. And we have to go on a tour. Those Alpitronic units are very cool. So I'm guessing this is gonna be a lounge that we've seen from actually a few other sites here from Tesla and NBV and others in Europe. It will have, I guess, a snack lounge, a restroom, everything you could really need. Pretty cool to be here while it's under construction. Beautiful design. Looks great in there. Loving this exterior wood shape here. And in terms of superchargers, it looks like they've put all of their power electronics over this way. Now, these are all version three superchargers, which is interesting because um, version four chargers have started to go in the ground at this point. And so I'm curious why they would install V3s. Doesn't matter, I guess. So this is what uh, we would call star central, central or star center. This is the supercharger that controls the power sharing for the entire site. And uh, I'm guessing this is just one bank of chargers. Maybe there's another one because there's four, eight, 12, 16, 24 stalls fed from here. Each cabinet is 360 kilowatts feeding four posts, uh, which doesn't sound like much until you think about that this charger can pull the power from that charger because there's DC links underneath these things so they can shift power around the entire site, which is pretty amazing. Ah, yeah, here we go. Just over here are the other chargers for this side of these superchargers. That makes sense. It saves a run 
And also it looks like they have two incoming feeds for the power. So they have one input feed here and another one here. I'm not sure what the blue box is. I'm not so familiar with the European like grid stuff, to be honest. I don't know how many KVA they would have coming into this site, but um, yeah, so I guess we should, two, two things I wanna talk about in this video is the site design and then also the entire charging station and everything like that. So this is an NBVA power distribution box of some kind. Maybe they're also the utility for here because they're the electric utility that also puts in charging. Anyway, can't really tell you much about the input grid side of things here. Maybe one of you guys can comment how much power is coming into this site because this isn't everything. There's going to be more down that away and I wanna walk down there and show you this. This is crazy. So if we come around over here, you have some portable toilets at the moment while the, um, I guess interior charging lounge is under construction. Whole bunch of superchargers down here. The one thing I'm not seeing is what happens if you pull in with a trailer? That's going to be the big question. I love that I'm literally the only one here charging at the moment. This is crazy. So the highway's right there. You get off the highway, drive down this little road, come on over here. It's like, I don't know, just about one mile because you have to, where the exits are spaced to get over here. It's not so bad in my opinion. But take a look at this. We have <laughs> Supercharger 10C over there marking 40 stalls because 10 times four, of course. Now there's a concrete pad in front of me and another one over there with huge conduit being run. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be for more buildings or what exactly. This looks like it could work for um, a pull through situation right here, doesn't it? On this side, there's two posts, but I guess there's so many here that you could easily just you know, kind of pull in here with your trailer one way or another and have the ability to charge. So that kind of works. And I can't imagine, you know, people would really get frustrated with you if you block one out of 40 stalls, you have to pull your trailer here with the parallel parking situation. I think that should be totally okay. So all of these uh, superchargers, of course, I mentioned are 250 kilowatts per port. That should lead to an average charging time of I would say 15 to 20 minutes for most Tesla owners. This is a perfect thing to do. You plug in your car, run to the restroom, grab a snack, look at your next stop and you're off. All of these are the Alpitronic Hyper 300 chargers. Interesting, they didn't go with the Hyper 400, which are the silicon carbide ones, but those are just coming onto the market. Perhaps these will have more. So these are all 300 kilowatt, uh, that split to 150 when you have two cars on. So the goal with these is if someone's charging on this side and that whole charger is available, just go over there so you don't steal any of their power, more or less. And then over here, there's a third port. I'm not sure what it is though. So it's all CCS here, except is this one Chatamo? Yes, so they have one Chatamo if the Leaf owner comes and also a 22 kilowatt AC port here. So this is like, the one savior unit <laughs> if someone happens to get routed here in a leaf or if they have an old zoe that doesn't dc charge they'll be able to level two charge with the ac charging i love how alpitronic builds this in as an option and so just a really i think smart idea just to have one backup unit for everyone who you know basically could could make it here without necessarily knowing what's going on all the superchargers of course version three with ccs which means older Model S and X actually have to use an adapter to use these chargers. But then I'm just coming down this way and I'm seeing some incredible things. If you take a look in the ground, you can see the conduit and the mounting plates are already here for more chargers. Look at this, NBV Hypernets. I don't know in what that means, but I think maybe coming soon is what that's saying. So you have a spot for another one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be 16 ports here on this side that they have already built in the capacity for, which is amazing. And they have all these concrete pads for the power electronics equipment. And then they have another spot. These actually look like they would be individuals. So I'm not sure what's going on here because if you look at the spacing between these ports in the ground, it would roughly equal one car per charger. So maybe this is a Tesla um, pre-wiring situation, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
on this side, but in a much smaller space than over there. So this would be one post, one post per car. It could be maybe a chem power site could be wired here. Really a whole bunch of chargers could go. And it's really cool that it's all pre-wired. Another concrete pad over this way with pre-wiring for another two chargers that would feed you know, four parking spaces. So another basically similar to the Alpitronic units. What's cool about the Alpitronic units here is it's an all in one. So you have to run bigger conduit, bigger, juicier power, but unlike superchargers that have the big boxes over there, these do all of the conversion power there. So that's an all in one charger. And yeah, it's bigger than a supercharger post, but feeding two stalls, I don't know. It doesn't seem too bad to me. It's really, I think, actually quite nice of an installation. The views here are just incredible. Off into the distance, we're at a high point for sure. And I cannot believe how well built out this site already is. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. When I'm like, we need more charging infrastructure, this is it. I love that they have the Tesla Supercharger branding just over here on the left side of your screen. Beautiful hub. This is going to really set the standard, raises the bar. And uh, there's a couple points I wanna talk about, mostly to do with location selection and where I recommend these to go in. But for the most part, uh, yeah, I'm so freaking blown away with this install. So I've been recently looking at a bunch of different charging solutions from inner city charging hubs, which have really limited space. You got to cram everyone in. You want good throughput to also low power uh, AC charging for city use. We have been to many charging stations together off highway where there's like two posts or four posts or eight posts that can feed a few number of cars. But the thing is, in order for electrification to work on a large scale, in order for people to feel comfortable switching to an electric vehicle, charging I think is the biggest hurdle. Of course there's cost, of course there's you know daily usability, which I think the cars pretty much work for most people. It's all about making sure you have no limits with your vehicle. A vehicle is designed to get you places. You shouldn't feel constrained by that. And charging hubs like this in between major metropolitan areas are setting the standard for what charging needs to look like, not in the future, but today. We are already at the point where charging stations are getting full and getting clogged and there's lines and people are angry. And it's, I think, deterring a lot of people from switching to an electric vehicle. So that is why I'm going hardcore into the charging coverage to show you these concepts and show you these ideas because we're talking, you know, 40, 50, 60 stalls. Okay, yeah, that works pretty well. Here, this is gonna be probably close to a 100 stall location. That's great for today, but I'm thinking we are gonna need three 500 stall locations here in the very near future if everyone were to switch to an EV. Now, the adoption curve is going to change and all of those things, but I just think it's important that we really figure out that these big boy charging hubs have a place in our charging, um, I would say overall scheme of charging options in between metropolitan areas. So where would something like this work in the US? Well, I'm thinking in between New York and Boston would be great in between obviously LA and San Francisco, but those kind of already exist on the West Coast. You have um, I'm trying to think, I don't know, but there's three or four different big ones there. But then also in between LA and uh, Vegas, there's already out there. So like the whole California thing has ideas like this, not with their own lounge, not necessarily in an area with no existing amenities, but this type of solution is coming up. Why do I really like this particular site? The thing that I like about this particular site is we are out in the middle of nowhere. Land is cheap and <laughs> where we are. There's nothing around here. So you can find a piece of land near a highway, go crazy building a charging hub that is going to serve electric vehicles for the next 50 to 80 years or more. And, um, you know, put in some chargers today, make sure the conduits run so that things can be replaced in the future and um, just put in big boy chargers. I really, really love this idea where you find cheap land, build a big hub, finance it over a long time for these companies because electric vehicles are only at the beginning of their adoption curve. The hardware can be easily retrofitable because again, all of these are all in one chargers. They can just be picked out, replaced with new units as newer technology comes out. And then they've thought ahead and pre-wired the lighting 
and the conduit to run future hardware as this site gets busy. Of course, today, no one's here right now. I don't think that anyone knows this site is turned on. It's still under construction. But however, um, when this site does get turned on, it probably will only see 30 to 50% capacity at most, would be my guess. But in three years from now, they might start seeing those holiday weekends where they're getting to 80, 90, even 100% capacity. I'm not surprised of that thought anymore. And then it'll be very easy for them to make the decision, hey, should we put more chargers in? It actually isn't gonna cost us much because they've already spent the big money, another IX pulling into charge just over here, they've already spent the big money to install the conduit. So I am, Really, really, really impressed. Just a couple last shots and then we'll end the video because I got a blast on the road. I got a video to shoot with Mag. IX owner not charging. Maybe they're working on the project over here is kind of what it looks like to me. But uh, our car should be close to fully charged at this point. I've really soaked in this location and learned about it. And I'm just so impressed with everything. So uh, can't thank you enough for watching this video. Can't thank NBV and Tesla for installing some of the coolest charging infrastructure around Europe. Um, of course, Alpitronic hyperchargers are some of my favorite non-Tesla DC fast chargers. They work amazing, they rip, and they are just starting to come to the US, so I'm so excited for that. And I uh, can't wait to jump back in my awesome BMW iX and go for a rip. So thanks y'all for watching. We'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.